to the All Brands Show. I'm Barbara, your host from allbrands.com, and we have a very cool show for you today. We have Tim Bond from Juki, and uh, if you're not familiar with Juki, they are the leader of garment manufacturing in the world. They manufacture for so many machines for so many uh, garment industries, and they just have it. They have the best machines and they're very well known for their sergers. And today we're going to be showing there's four air threading sergers that are available now from Juki. Some of them are brand new. So we wanted to break down like, what are these new sergers? What's the difference? Um, so we're gonna break that down with Tim today. And if you haven't yet, please go ahead and comment hashtag all brands because at the end of this presentation, we'll be giving away a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card to one lucky winner. So I hope it's you. <laughs> so good luck. All right, well, we'll bring in Tim and here he is. Hi, Tim. Hi, Barbara, how are you today? Excellent, I'm so excited well, about this. As you can see, I have a few toys to play with today. <laughs> I have one too. <laughs> oh, she has an MO1000. Yes. Tim, I have to say, Juki has been, I think, the go to serger for so long. I think even before I was born, <laughs> they were the go to serger. They make the best serger, hands down. And everybody really wants the air threading because it's so easy to use. Well, you know, we have made surges for the home market for many, many years, and we still manufacture our, our previous series of M600 series machines. But like you said, everybody wants a surger that's easy to use, easy to thread, and you can't get much easier than having air threading the system for you. And you can't make a mistake with it. So you've shot two problems right off the bat with air threading making it easier and not being able to make a mistake when you're threading. That to me is a win-win situation for any surger. But I think you're going to tell us about the one you have as your favorite, right next to your left arm, I think, maybe? Yes. So here it is. Okay. This is the Juki M1000. This one's been been out for the longest. It's the hands down most popular for a number of years for a threading surger. So maybe you can kind of walk us through how the air threading works, Jim. I'd be happy to. It's really very simple. So you're going to take the tray off the front of the machine. And you're going to open the door and the door opens just by pushing it off to the right side and letting it flip forward. So there's a couple of things you want to know about air threading. You can't go wrong with it, number one. And number two, if you follow the step by steps, it'll thread itself every time for you. So do we need to take your threads out, Barbara? Do you need to cut some threads and remove them for us? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to trim them right here. Okay. and pull them out of the back. I'll also let you know while she's doing this, our machines have built-in safety features. If you step on the pedal and the doors are open, either the door that's open on the face of the machine or the door to the side, the machine will not run. It will also not run if the foot is up. So we have three built-in safety features just to make it safer when you're working with the machine, changing the needles, using the needle thread or even threading the machine itself with the air thread, you don't have to worry about, oh, I accidentally hit the pedal and it made the machine run. It's going to make you jump. And what's the first thing you're going to do is you're going to pull your hands back from it, which creates other issues in safety. So having that built-in safety features on the machine, just you can just relax when you're wanting to do things with the machine, knowing that it's not going to run because I have the door open or I have the foot up. But that's also a question as to my machine isn't running. Did you drop the foot? Well, I did everything but did you lower the foot? And then they go, no, I didn't. Now they've learned a valuable lesson that that is also the added safety feature in the machine. So now you're ready to thread. You got your threads out, right, Barbara? Yes. So okay. I always have a question. How long do I pull these threads out? So you're gonna pull them out to the front edge of the door, just beyond it. So you have about eight to 10 inches of thread. So here's the door. Okay. okay so now the, the idea a long time ago is we used to pull off this huge long length of thread for us. We don't really need to do that. We just need enough to get through the, the tubes 
and to have access to it at the other end. And we don't need five or six inches flying up the far end. So now you're gonna touch that lever that's right behind your hand. I can't see it right now, but there's that lever. You push that up. And you're gonna turn the hand wheel so that the tubes engage. What you're doing is you're telling the machine now that you want to engage the air threading system. The first lever is to spring load the tubes, but they will only connect when the serger is in the right position. You just heard it click, so now the serger is in the correct position for air threading. Now we simply need to put thread into the tubes. So either thread, either looper, doesn't matter. Upper looper, lower looper, you cannot make a mistake in threading with the looper on these machines. You're gonna to wanna to put about a quarter of an inch to a half inch of thread into the tube. I've had people say, well, don't I need to put like two inches in there? No, you just need a little bit of thread in there. The air threading system will grab it and wisp it through the rest of the way for you. And we thread both louvers at the same time because we're not using a plunger system. We have a button that we're going to press on this machine. It's going to run a little motor. The little motor is going to pump air, and that air is going to make that thread just go through the, the path for us. You want to make sure it's not caught on anything. And if you're all set, Barbara, now you can just press the little round button next to the two tubes. All right, here we go. It worked. It worked. See, a little bit of guidance, and it'll work every time for you. So now you're going to put your lower looper on top of your upper looper, like you would in any serger, and pull both threads to the back of the machine. Let's see here. Just a second. Yay. Look at that. There you go. So now you've got both the threads at the back. I just let them hang off the back corner of the machine. That was very difficult to air thread, wasn't it, Barbara? Oh, my goodness. How many of you watching thread your own surgers or do you use the air threading? Let us know. That was so easy. So another thing that we have, Tim is the uh, needle threader. So um, it's right here and you can thread the left needle or the right needle just by pushing this lever left or right. So um, very easy to thread the needles as well. Now don't forget, you need to flip your lever back down so you disengage your air threading paths. And to use your needle threader, you're gonna wanna rotate the hand wheel so that you find the matching marks. There's a mark on the wheel itself and a black line on the side of the machine. I don't know if the little white space is gonna see, but you can definitely see the black line in the video there. So you just move them so they match. I usually say they have to talk to each other. <laughs> I have to see it, you can see it. There we go, just like that. Once they're talking to each other, yes. now the needle's in the right position to use the needle threader. And our needle threaders aren't spring-loaded. You push it down, it's going to lock into position. So if you're threading your right needle, you're going to push the lever down so it goes to the right position. When it pivots forward, it'll lock. You don't have to hold it. So, Barbara, you can take your finger off the down lever. Oh, oh, thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Yeah. Uh -huh. Now you can take the thread and snap it in between the thongs and lift up on the lever. Your needle is threaded. That's so amazing. This serger is awesome. I love it. Now, I, I really like our needle threaders because I don't have to sit there and hold it and then fiddle with the thread. Mm -hmm. You can put it down in position, snap the thread in, lift it up, move it to the next position, put it down, snap the thread into it, push it up, boom, I'm done. Now I can get back to enjoying what I like to do, which is playing with the machine. <laughs> so let me make a stitch on it. All so right. And see. All right. I'm gonna put my back on. Okay. Here we go. So now as a surgeon, you can use the cutter on the back of the corner, or you can trim around and have the cutter on the machine cut your threads for you, or you can just use a pair of snips to trim your threads. How beautiful. When we get, nice stitch, isn't it? Uh, it's perfect. 
It's absolutely perfect. That's because it's a jukey. Yes. Oh my goodness. Well, I can't wait to see what features we add by looking at the newer models. So the ML1000 was our first air thread serger. The only place to go from there is up, right? So how do you go up? You add information to the machine. So hence we have the MO2000 QVP. This is the same machine, but it has more information available on the machine so that you really don't have to refer back to the book. Mechanically, it operates the same as the MO1000, but it has a very informative display on it. Now, Barbara, I'm gonna to need to zoom in so that folks can see the display. So if you could entertain them for just a second, we're gonna zoom in so we can take a closer look. Got it, Tim. Okay, so we have a question actually from Maureen McKenna Siata. I love your embroidery design. Uh, she asked, can I thread the NO2000 in any order? And the answer is yes. On any Juki machine, you should be able to thread it in every order, but we'll ask Tim to confirm that. All right, Tim. All right, to answer your question, yes. An air thread serger, our Juki air thread sergers, you can thread them in any order because they are a closed path. Hence, I said earlier, you can't thread them wrong. So you can't make a mistake. So it doesn't matter anymore with our air thread sergers whether you go upper looper, lower looper, and then the needles, or you go the needles and then the upper looper and the lower looper. The path is closed. The threads only go in one place where they're supposed to be. So you really don't have to worry about threading in the old fashioned order. So now we've zoomed in on the MO2000. As you can see, this has a display on it, and it's showing me 15 stitches across the front. Now, these are the stitch capabilities in the machine, and this panel is actually telling you what you need to change on the machine in order to achieve that particular stitch pattern. I can select the patterns across the top here by moving my arrows over here. You see it says one to 15, and in my display right now, it says number two, which is just a regular three thread serger for stretch. Yes, we do have different stitches for different fabrics, but I can scroll through and I'm gonna go up to number eight because that's gonna give me a three thread rolled hem, but that's just the title. I need the rest of the information. So if I come back over here and I press the enter key, it's now giving me the information to set the machine. It's telling me I need a right needle. It's telling me what my tension should be, a four on my needle thread, a three and a half on my upper looper, a five on my lower looper. It's telling me what my stitch length and my cutting width should be at, at a one and a one. My N is for my differential feed, whether my stitch finger should be up or down. And because I'm doing a rolled hem, it should be down, disengaged. And of course, do I want to use a two thread spreader? Well, I'm doing a three thread rolled hem, so I don't need to engage the two threader. And of course, the last one is over here on this far side. You see, that's the blade. Because I'm doing a rolled hem, I want to trim the edge of the fabric right along that edge so it's nice and clean for my rolled hem. So this is the information on how to set the machine. But you know what? The controls to set the machine are all on the outside. So on this side over here, I have my stitch length and my differential feed. My tensions are across the top. Everything else that I need is right down in the front of the machine. And I'm going to take a closer look at that on another model because there's some features in there I want you to look at. Pay attention to also because they might be features you want in your next serger. So as you can see, Barbara, this information display can help eliminate having to find that book. If you're like me, that book is in a drawer someplace and do not ask me which drawer it's in because I don't remember what drawer I put it in, but I don't need it with the MO2000. It's right here on the machine for me. Same functions as the MO1000 with threading and the needle threaders. We just gave it its built-in book. It's built-in help file, if you would. Sounds pretty good, huh, Barbara? Oh my goodness, yes, Tim. We have uh, another question that came in from Cindy Ball. Um, very good question. What's the difference between a serger and a cover lock? <laughs> okay, so a serger surges, it's overcasting the thread. It's overcasting the edge of the fabric. It's giving you this stitch that she showed you before. I'm gonna pull out a multicolored stitch here so that you can see this. I might need to walk around to the front of the camera so you can see it closer. In fact, I will. And I'll, sh I'll show her while you're doing that, Tim. Um, get this yes, that's a serge stitch. So that's overcasting the edge of the fabric. 
Now you see I used multicolors just so that we could see that the tensions are all nicely balanced. And a cover stitch or a cover hem machine is doing finishing work for like hemming. So like what Barbara's showing you the sleeve of her shirt, on the back it looks like a funky little zigzag, but on the front you're seeing two parallel rows of stitching. That's two needles with a chain looper underneath. That's a cover hem. Cover hems generally also don't cut your fabric. They're not designed to trim off. They're designed to do the hemming work. You can also use them for decorative work, which we can also use a serger for decorative work as well. Some sergers will do cover hem. The four thread sergers that we sell do not do a cover hem, but we have a beautiful cover hem machine. And I think we've done a program on that one before, haven't we, Barb? Yes. So I hope that answers your question. Yes, thank you. All righty. So we've looked at this one. It's comparable to the MO1000, except like I said, it's got the book built into it. But I want you to see one other little feature on here. And that is right here. You see this little button? It looks like a little pad and pen. I can store my own personal settings for this particular stitch or any of the stitches as a matter of fact. So let's say that I like to use a particular thread in my serger when I'm doing a rolled hem. And I know that I've needed to adjust the tension, but I don't want to have to remember that. I can make that change into the memory of the machine. So when I pull up the rolled hem the next time, it's going to give me my settings. Very handy to have. If I had my book, I'd be writing notes in my book. But this way, I can put the notes right here in the system for me to, to next for the next time I pull up and use the rolled hem or cover hem. I mean, not cover hem or a, um, three thread roll hem, two thread roll hem. They're a little trickier. Sometimes you might need to tweak the tensions because of some of the specialty threads we use. But you can make those notes in the system here and not have to worry about post-its on the side of your machine. So Barbara, we're gonna go on to the next machine so that we can talk about that. Okay, Tim, I actually have a question that I have on that machine and it may be a silly question, but we're just gonna go with it. I'm looking at the brochure for the MO1000 um, and it has a list of, um, of different stitches that it does. Are there any more stitches that the MO2000 does that the MO1000 does not? They both are exactly the same mechanically mach mechanical machines. So I can do 15 stitch patterns or set here. The same 15 patterns you will find in the book for the MO1000, and the book is what you use to set the machine because there's no reference built into the machine. But the same stitch patterns are capable on both machines. That's great to know, Tim. But I have to tell you, if you are, have done surging before, um, you will know this, but if you are brand new and looking for a serger to switch between stitches in a manual, and the manual is going to look like this. It's in black and white. Um, it's going to give you all of the settings, but it can be a little bit overwhelming mentally to look at the different diagrams. To have it on the screen is such a huge deal. It is. And I will tell you, the biggest thing you have to learn on this is what do the little symbols on the screen mean? But once you understand them, it's a piece of cake because you're going to know that that is the left needle. That is the right needle. That indicates for my differential feed. That's the indicator for my, my cutter. So all those things are on the screen and there's information for them. Like you said, going to the book can be daunting because you're trying to relate the book to the machine. Here you have images on the machine. You don't have to worry about looking back and forth. You can match it here and like, oh, that kind of looks like the cutter. Oh, that's my right needle because it says R for right needle. So the information is available to you here on the machine. I, I like that a lot. This is actually one of my favorite machines um, since we added the information to it. Oh my goodness. So like I said, we're going to switch over machines now. Okay. And I'm going to start with a close up on the other machine. Ah, maybe I won't. Maybe I'll start with a full picture on the machine just to whet your appetite. So give me just a second, Barbara. Got it, Tim. Okay. So um, I'm going to go ahead and answer some questions that we might have. Uh, let's go in here and check on this. Okay. So Joe's asking uh, Does it have an air threader? So every. Uh, each of the four Jukies that we're showing today are going to be air threading Juki sergers. And uh, serger and overlocker are both terms that are used interchangeably. The word serger is the US word and overlocker is um, like the European term for um, sergers. 
So Mary asks, I've been looking for a new serger and I've been interested in the Juki. You're going down the right road, Mary. Um, are they as good as your sewing machines? Juki is and has been the leader of um, sergers forever. So yes, you can be very confident when you um, look at any of the Juki models that you're getting a very good quality um, product. All right, Tim, are you ready? I'm ready. So this is the next step up from our MO1000 in our regular Juki product line. This is the MO2800. Now you're gonna notice it has a different tray. It has a different look and style to it. All right, so we've done some tweaks to make things a little easier. And I wanna draw your attention to really more of the mechanical changes in the machine that actually helps set it apart from our previous models. One thing that I want you to note is the door on the machine. When you open the door, it's gonna open like it's supposed to, but the door is gonna be in a stationary position when you're doing adjustments because we've made this door two parts now. See, I have a little bit of movement in my cover plate here. So when I adjust my blade in and out, the door isn't gonna move. It keeps that line on the side of the machine to be nice and clean. I actually kind of like that because otherwise it might look like it's hanging out at the edge it doesn't really look very neat when you're adjusting it on the like our older format machine. This is just an aesthetic thing, but I think it adds to the clean lines of the machine. You'll also notice that it's all white with a little silver matching some of our other newer models that have gone to silver trim on them. Once again, I like the silver look. I think it gives it a nice clean look, a little bit of futuristic, but not over the top futuristic. So with that in mind, I'm going, to re I'm going to cover a couple other features. Dual LED lighting is basically standard on our uh, air thread sergers. So there's a, a light on the outside of the needles and on the inside, so we have better lighting. And that's adding to the cleanness of the light you see coming down on your fabric. Very hard to get incandescent lights on both sides that don't build up heat, but with LED lighting, we don't get the heat build up and we can add additional lighting on either side to improve the visibility of what you're working on, whether it's light fabric or dark fabric. The other nice thing, you saw Barbara putting the, the tray on the other one. This tray snaps off. Oh, thank say, you. <laughs> I, I knew you would like that one, Barbara. I kind of wrestled with the other tray myself, but once I figured out, oh, I need to put it in first here and then latch it down, I figured that was an easy way to go, but this one was a big improvement, and you're gonna see the same tray on our next model up as well. So that's a nice feature that we have on the new series of machines. Now, I'm also gonna talk about one more feature that I really like, it's up here on the top. And that's when you change and you take out a needle, what do you do with that extra needle? I went from four thread to three thread. So I took out one of my needles. Well, we now have magnets on the top here. So I have a place to store that needle while I'm not using it. You don't have to worry about putting it back in its pack. It's not going to go any place. It's not going to vibrate off. The magnet is very strong. You can hear it click. And I'm holding it about a half inch, three quarters of an inch off. The magnet is just pulling it down onto the little flat space for the needle to stay in place while I do other things with the, with the serger. Nice feature, huh, Barbara? I love that. And I always like, I need a little spot to put like little tiny scissors maybe, or, um, or anything, you know, that's magnetic. It's a great feature. So we're not giving up any features either. So we've kept our air threading system. We've kept our needle threaders. The same type of system that we showed you with the MO1000 carries over into the MO2000, carries into the MO2800. So we've kept it nice, clean, and simple. But we did do one change in our threading. And Barbara didn't mention this when she threaded the machine because you didn't actually see her thread the back of the machine. But up here at the top, we used to have a little hook piece that you used to clip the thread into. And it was always kind of a little odd that you had to dip your hand down behind it to get the thread to catch into it. Now we simply grab the thread and push it down. It'll clip into the back for us. Much cleaner, much simpler. You're not gonna have the problem of having to get that hook in the back. It just drops into position. And you'll hear it click when you drop it in. So that's a nice feature that's changed on the newer models as well. Hey, Tim, I can show that on the MO1000 if you like. That would be great if you wanna switch that picture over for us. So you're looking at the little metal tabs up, turn it the other way. There you go, right there. So if you look right above the handle where she's pointing, there's a little metal tab. That actually takes two hands to get the thread to catch into that. It's 
not hard. You just got to do both hands to get it in there. Here, I just push it down into the trough. It snaps into position for me. So, you know, Barbara, now I'd like to take a close-up look at this machine in the working area here. And the only way I can do that is with my little camera that I've already got set up. So if you would entertain our friends for a moment while I verify that my camera's gonna work and we can take a really close up picture and we can discuss some of the nice finer features of this particular machine. We gotcha, Tim. Okay, so I wanted to let everyone know and I'll remind you at the end, if you wanna meet Tim and you're local or you like to travel to shows, we have two shows coming up this spring that we're going to be involved with. And uh, Tim will be there with allbrands.com representing the Juki machines. And uh, the first one is actually in less than a month. So book your uh, hotel now. I think they have discounted rates on their website. Um, it's called Everything Embroidery Market. It's in Lafayette, Louisiana. And this show is actually for all of the uh, embroidery businesses. Um, if you're just doing it for fun, that's fine too. They have sublimation, uh, vinyl, blanks. We have uh, several classes that we're teaching um, and stage demonstrations and giveaways. That's going to be at the Cajun Dome in Lafayette, Louisiana, March 3rd through the 5th. And then in if you're a quilter, uh, we will be at the original Sewing and Quilting Expo in New Orleans, Louisiana at the Pontchartrain Center, May 4th, 5th, and 6th. Juki and All Brands will be there at the show. Tim, are you ready? I'm ready anytime. All right. I hope everybody likes the picture and they can see what I'm going to talk about here because I want to talk about one thing that's different on the newer machines with the newer presser foot. You see this little slot right here? That's the old presser foot, no slot. It's got an opening, but here I have a slot. So it's actually more like a guide slot. This is used to put tape into. So if I'm doing garment construction and my pattern calls for tape into the waistband or tape into the collar of a shirt, I can put that tape right through here and have it stitched into uh, the fabric as I'm surging. So I'm not having to worry about guiding it because I have a slot right here. If I use one needle or two needles, both needles can penetrate into it. If I'm using a narrower tape, I can adjust the guide a little bit so I can accommodate where I want the needle to penetrate the tape. So this is a new feature that we've added into our newer surges. I thought this was just something new in the design of it. And then I did some looking up on it. And I was like, why is there a hole here? And that's what that is for. So it's like, now I don't have to go to my sewing machine to put the tape in. I can do it on the serger, which to me is much faster than trying to do it on my sewing machine. So as you can see, our old foot versus our new foot with the guide, that's a big plus. So one other thing I'm gonna talk about, and this is uh, an item that I liked on other machines that we didn't have, but now we have it on our machine, and I'm gonna pop the foot off this machine, so how easy it just snaps on and off for me. And that is the fact that when I move my blade, my stitch finger moves with it. Now this is very important because some machines, they don't move with it. You can see as I move my blade, my stitch finger is moving with it, which means as I change my cutting width, the edge, what the threads are going to wrap out, that stitch finger, they're going to wrap over that stitch finger with the edge of the fabric, they're going to match. Except for sometimes when we sew on knits. So if, I, if I'm a garment sewer and I sew on knits a fair amount, I like to be able to have my knit not have those little loops on the edge of my fabric. So I'm going to show you the sample here. You can see how the loops are meeting right where they're supposed to be at the edge of the fabric, right? Well, if this was knit and this fabric had pulled back, my loops would still be out there. But with this 20, with the MO2800, watch my stitch finger carefully. I can adjust my stitch finger separately. No. Yes. Oh, this gives you the availability to move that stitch finger in so when I'm cutting the knit and the knit pulls back that 16th of an inch or 30 seconds of an inch a little bit, I can adjust the stitch finger so I'm not getting that, I use the term lacy edge, but in reality, they're loose loops that are hanging off the edge of the fabric. Lacy sounds like it's intended, but they're really not intended. You really want them to be clean and wrapping right at the edge of the fabric. 
This gives us that extra control with the MO2800 and this dual adjustability. That is like the cat's meow on this serger. Game changer. Now, you saw that I'm, I'm reaching down here for my controls. So these are where my other controls are. They're on the outside of the machine. I'm not having to open any doors to do any settings on any of our machines. That's a big plus. Everything is within reach at your fingertips. So I can change my blade. I can move my stitch finger out of the way. I can drop my blade out of the way because sometimes I want to move my stitch finger out to convert to rolled hem. But I might want to be doing uh, decorative work where I don't want my blade out of the way. So I can always drop my blade out of the way as well. Now, those two functions are the same on all of our machines. So I can move my stitch finger out of the way. I can lower it for my rolled hem, which I have to be able to do. And I need to be able to drop the blade out of the way for those times that I do not wish to cut my fabric. So there's two nice features. They're both controlled right here on the front of the machine. I'm going to show you a better picture of the front of that machine in just a minute. So I'm going to flip my stitch finger back up. I'm going to bring my blade back into position. When I cycle, the machine will bring the blade up so that everything in timing is correct. You know, it's one of those things people drop their feed dogs on their machine and they wonder why they don't pop back up because you want everything to be in time. You don't want the feed dogs to be out of sync with the needle. The same here. You don't want the blade to be out of sync with the rest of the operation. So what do we think, Barbara? I so much love this, Tim. We actually had a really great question from Maureen again. Marie's coming with the awesome questions. We have a few more that I'm saving to the end, so if I haven't asked it yet, just wait. Uh, Maureen asks, are the feet interchangeable on these machines? Yes. If the foot fits the MO1000, it fits all of our air thread sergers. Great question. So an MO1000 foot set will work on an MO2800 and an MO3000. So you're not, if you have an older, if you have a MO1000, you already have a foot set, you don't have to worry about buying more feet. So you decide you want to upgrade. Now, I just want to talk about one other main feature, which really sets our new surgeons apart. And I think you're going to go, what the world is he talking about? But you're going to understand in just a moment. The distance between your cutting blade and your needle is crucial when you're working on things like curves. Now, Barbara, just imagine you're sewing a curve and you're getting those loops off the edge of the curve because you're trying to do a very tight curve, but your limitation is actually this spacing. The oh. space between your blade and your needle. That's what actually sets the limitation as to how tight you can actually do an effective curve. Now, there are ways around that. They're a little bit more work. You have to be a little bit more practiced with it. But on our MO2800 and our MO3000, we have the shortest distance between our blade and our needle in the home surging industry. We are now under 10 millimeters in space between the two. We also come now with a tight curved foot. It's included with the machine. So it's not like, oh, well, I have this nice new feature, but I have to buy an extra foot to use it. No, Juki thinks about things like that. So the new curved foot is included with the machine to take advantage of this shorter distance in here. Tim, that is awesome. We had a question about like the feet from Mary. She asked, um, does it come with extra feet? Can we talk about, um, maybe not right this second, but um, at some point in the video, I want to definitely not forget to touch on that. Sure, it, it, the, the, the MO2800 and the MO3000 both come with the regular foot and the curved foot, but we have extra feet available and they're available separately or in sets because you may not want every foot in that set. You only want one or two feet, so you can buy them individually. I think that's a nice way to go because some people, oh, I want four feet. There's a six foot set. All four of those feet are in the set, and it's, sometimes it turns out to be a little more economical just to buy the set. Whereas otherwise, if you're just buying one or two extra feet, it's not worth it because those two feet may not be in the three foot set. They may be in the six foot set, and you don't want to spend that kind of money to get six feet because there's four extras you don't really want. So yes, they're available separately and they're interchangeable between all of the air thread sergers. I love that, Tim. So everybody, if you're interested to see what's available, um, we're actually currently adding those feet to the category page. So if you click the link in the description of this video, not only will it show you all of the sergers that we're talking about today, the air threading sergers by Juki, we'll also add those feet that are compatible with all of the models. 
All right, Barbara, I want to change my view here so I can show them the control knobs here on the face of the machine. So if you would entertain them for a moment, we're going to switch our view again. Got it. Let me entertain you. Oh, my gosh. Ah, uh, Kay, yes, I agree. Threading a serger. Okay, I've done it a million times because uh, I've worked retail store since I was in middle school uh, so for my parents who started the business in 1976. Um, yes, so even for seasoned veterans of threading sergers, um, it still is just like so nice just to be able to like for the machine to to thread the air for you. So yes, good job. Okay, Tim, I'm gonna bring you back in. So now I'm showing you the front of the machine where the controls are. Remember, I said all the controls are at your fingertips. These are the controls for your cutting whip, your stitch finger, your blade up and down, and then this little knob down here. That's our adjustment, our fine tune adjustment for the stitch finger. So nothing has to be opened to get to do any adjustments on the machine. I like that a lot because some of the older machines or some machines from the early models, you had to open up the side door just to adjust the stitch length. I wanted to drop the blade, I had to open the door and press the spring and flip it down. Everything is controlled right here on the front for this area, and the rest of the settings are on the right side and across the top. I find our layout to be very friendly and very easy to understand and, and grasp. Now, I got one more feature on this machine. I'm going to zoom out and hope that I can. Here, let me come in so no one's <laughs> seasick. All right. Okay, so. Barbara, you're surging. You're going to be doing something else. And now you're coming back to your serger, but now you want to do a rolled hem. How many steps do you think you have to go through on your older sergers to do a rolled hem? Okay, Tim. So first I'm going to, if I have the MO1000 and not the, the, the um, 2000, I'm going to get out the manual. <laughs> I'm going to have to... Go through a lot of steps. How about you answer that question? So I'm going to make them easy for you. On this machine, I'm going to drop my stitch finger out of the way. I will have taken out my left needle if I had two needles in. I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to adjust my stitch length to one because I want to be down to that really tight, short stitch length. Now I have tensions I have to deal with, right? because I want that, that rolling of the rolled hem. Okay, I'm done. I don't need to touch my tension dial. I have a lever right here that allows me to convert from regular surging to rolled hem just by sweeping the lever up. My tension stood for me. That is amazing. I know people are like, what? I have to adjust my tensions? Not on this machine. We simply throw the lever, it will make the adjustments inside so that it has now more tension on that lower looper, pulling the thread down, lightening up on the upper looper so that you get a beautiful rolled hem with it. That is the first time I've ever seen a feature like that before in my life. My mind is blown right now. I have not seen this on another serger that I know of, and I've been around in the sewing industry for a while. But um, when I saw it, I was like, what is that? And then I had to look at the thing and I went, that looks like it has something to do with rolled hem. And then when they said, oh, you just flip that and it converts the tensions for you, I was like, oh, that is sweet. That is just too easy. I see, yes, the total benefit of this machine now. I was convinced with the other features, but this feature has blown me away. So for those that like a knee lift, our new surgeries now have a knee lift port. So it comes with a knee lift, so you can use a knee lift to raise and lower your presser foot. I personally don't use a knee lift, but I know many people who do. They find it very handy when they're working on big bulky items. Their hands are free. They're not having to worry about lifting the presser foot by letting go of their project. They can use a knee lift to raise and lower the presser foot. Very handy tool. It is on both our MO2800 and our MO3000. So what do you think, Barbara? You want, want to upgrade your MO1000 to a 2800? 100% yes, absolutely. But I need to see the MO3000 first before I make my decision. Ah, uh, that's a wise decision. Wait and see all the toys before you decide which one to buy. Oh, yeah. 
So now we're going to switch cameras again because I'm actually going to reset my stage so that I can give you a better view of the MO3000. Got it. Okay. I'll answer some questions while he's switching the cameras around. Um, let's see. Mary asks, does it have a free arm? Um, no, these do not have a free arm, but good question. Uh, Christy says, easy needle threader. I like that. Yes, the needle threader is huge. And it's so funny. Some of these um, sergers on the market that are like $8,000, that don't have needle threaders included. I don't understand why. Yes. And these are just a fraction of that price and they're available online. So you can purchase them anywhere in the United States. Um, that's the way to go. Um, all right, Tim, are you ready to go? Okay. I think not yet. Um, let's see. Oh, here we go. Uh, and I'll ask Tim this later, but uh, yes, Juki cover stitch machine. That was very interesting. So um, we had uh, someone ask, what's the difference between a serge stitch and a cover stitch machine? Um, yeah, if you want to do cover stitch, that's one machine, and then serge is another machine. Some of them are combined together, depending on what brand and model you get. Uh, but it, I like to have separate machines. I think it's a good idea. All right, Tim is ready. Here he is. All right, MO3000, the Akane. This is our current top of the line machine for the home sewer that must have the everything does it for you serger. I cannot tell you. This machine, we introduced it in December. We've already sold out the first couple of shipments. It has been very well received. Our 2800 was introduced last July. It was also very well received. But once you see this, Barbara, you're going to go, OMG, I have got to have one. Now, I'm going to touch quickly on some of the features that are common between the two. Remember the little needle storage on the top of the 2800? We have needle storage on the top of the 3000. The knee lift function still on the 3000. They are the same format of machine, so we're sharing that same kind of chassis. However, we're going to stop there, and we're going to do some things a little differently. You notice across the top here, there's no tension dial. We do not have a tension system. We have a measured thread system, and I'll explain that in more detail in just a minute, which means that on the side over here, I have a stitch pattern selection dial that I'm going to dial in A, B, C, or D, and that's going to give me my four primary stitch functions for the machine. Now, these selections, I don't have to refer back to a book. Why? Because I have a display. So when I dial in a stitch pattern here, it's going to come up on the display and tell me which stitch pattern I've dialed in. It also will adjust the thread system for me. It will give me the values for setting my stitch length and my cutting. So it's doing the information. It's giving me the information that the 2000 gave me, but it's the next step up. And I haven't even begun to really talk about the really cool things in the machine. LED lighting again. How about LED lighting? that you can adjust the hue on. You know, we have a sewing machine, we have a couple of sewing machines that you can adjust the, the brightness and the intensity and the color value of our LED lighting on it. You can adjust it on the serger. It gets late at night, I get tired, I don't need such a bright light because it, it gets tiresome on me, so I like to be able to tone the light down. Maybe I need to change the hue on it to make it a little bit more incandescent or a little less white. I can do that on the machine. That's a nice feature to be able to adjust that color when you start getting tired or maybe you're sitting next to the window and the window is washing out your light. You might want to change it so it matches that daylight color. You can do that with the Akane. Now, also speed control. How many surgeons do you know actually have speed control? There's no rheostat. You know, the little slide mechanism that you see on some of the machines, that's because the speed control is controlled through the screen and it's electronic control. I can set it to creep along. How many of you have problems with your surgery? You step on the pedal and it springs to life. It suddenly jumps to 800 stitches a minute. Take your foot off real quick so it slows down. <laughs> you can slow the whole machine down so that you can take a stitch at a time if you'd like. Wow. So it's giving you better control over it. Now, that's just a couple of things before I really get into the really, really cool things with the machine. 
functionality is, is the same as our previous units, except we're going to talk a little bit different about our air threading. So I'm going to take off our tray and I'm going to open our door so that you can see. And I'm going to probably have to zoom in so you can take a better look. But we changed our air threading on this from a button to a switch. Now, this is another one of those little keep in mind a safety item. So I have a switch right here. It's not a button that I push. It's a switch I actually throw. I'm pushing it. I don't know if you can hear it, but it's not running because the system is not engaged. Therefore, if I accidentally hit the button, it's not going to pump air. I wasn't expecting it to. On the other models, you could actually press the button and it would suddenly run the air. You might pull your hand back uh, because you weren't expecting it to run. Here, you actually turn the air on and turn the air off after you've engaged the system. Extra little safety so you don't get carried away with it or you don't get startled by it. I find that to be very handy. It took a little getting used to, but I really found it much easier and a little bit safer. I just press the button on, air threads it through, press the button off, I'm good to go. Same type of path, the same type of click on the top up here when I'm using my air threading, and the same interface safeties are on this machine as on the previous ones. <clears throat> We're not getting anything up. We're just getting more for our money, more features, more ease of use. Isn't that why we all look for an upper line machine? Is because we want it to do more things for us. Barbara, I'm sure you've heard me say this before. I am a lazy sewer. Anything the machine can do for me, I am more than willing to let it do it for me. This serger takes care of those things for me at the drop of a hat. So I want to get a close up here of the screen for our folks. But before we do that, I want to whet your appetite for one feature that you will probably not find on some of the other machines. And that is, I want to draw your attention to right here, this little button. Right here. <gasps> but that looks like a pair of scissors. A pair of scissors on a serger? No. Yes. This serger has a built-in cutter to cut your chain thread. Now, you notice our foot control for this serger looks a little different than our other ones. Our other foot controls are all black and kind of old style. They're totally functional, but this foot control comes from our sewing side, from our sewing machine. Because our sewing machines, you press the blue dot to make it go, but you rock your heel back to activate the thread cutter. So we brought it into this serger to give you that functionality. You can stop sewing, press the heel down on the back, and it will then trim the thread for you. Yes, there is a sensor. So if the sensor is covered, it will not fire off. Even if you manually hit the button, it will sense that there is fabric in the area so that it will not, it will not trim. Once that sensor is cleared, it will allow you to trim. I think this is a big plus feature. Now I'm not chaining off to pull it around with that six or seven or eight inches of extra thread in there. I can surge just beyond it, hit the thread cutter either with my heel or with the button on the machine, and it'll cut the thread for me. What do you think, Barbara? Well, I agree, Jeanette. That is awesome. And yes, Christy, this is so cool. And I think when you guys hear the price of this machine, you're really going to think all of these great. They're like top of the line features uh, for such a great price are so cool. Now, I do want to expand on the cutter, but we're going to do that in a minute. But I also want to let you know there is another feature in the MO3000, the Akane, that is not in our other sergers. It is actually a feature that is in some of our sewing machines. Do you have people or do you like to sew on heavier items? Maybe you're making bags or you're making heavy clothes or heavy, uh, heavy quilts with lots of layers and you want to run it through your serger, but you always feel like you're fighting to get that bulk into the serger. Well, you notice I have two knobs on the top of my machine. One is my presser foot pressure. This I have on all of my regular air thread sergers from Juki. This knob is micro lift. The micro lift is a feature we have on our TL machines and our DX machines. It allows you to create a gap underneath the foot to giving it a little space without adjusting your presser foot pressure so that you can accommodate thickness in a project that you're working on. For example, I like to use this on my sewing machine. As an example, I'm putting a D-ring onto a strap. So I have the strap doubled over and I'm trying to fit it through underneath my foot. That's adding extra bulk in there. So if I can lift my foot off just a little bit to accommodate that bulk, it'll feed cleaner through the machine. Well, I use a serger to 
quilt to uh, finish off the edge of my quilt. When I get a really bulky quilt, I've always thought that I'm kind of forcing it under there and trying to feel like I have to help it through. But now I can give myself a tiny bit of a gap to accommodate some of that thickness from the quilt. And it just glides right through and gives me a nice, even overcast edge on my serger before I, on my quilt before I put my binding on. So you think that's worthwhile, Barbara? Uh, this is so amazing, Tim. I've never seen a serger that you can purchase on the internet at this price with all of these features. And it's Juki, which is like the best brand that you can buy. Well, great. So I'm going to do a little sewing here because I want you to understand some things about the machine. And we're going to zoom in in a minute and take a closer look at some of the features. One of the features I actually want to take a closer look at is, remember, there's no tension. So how do I do an adjustment? So I've got it selected on A. I'm going to press my, my AD button here. Two needle, four thread overlock. It's telling me that I should have two needles in. Stitch finger is up. What my stitch length and stitch, uh, cutting width setting should be for an average setting. And if I make an adjustment on the machine, it will change the thread advancing up top. It will change the measurement on how much thread is going to be dispensed. I'm not adjusting tension. There's no tensions in the machine. If it needs 10 millimeters of thread, it will allow 10 millimeters or it will measure 10 millimeters of thread through. If I make an adjustment and it only needs six millimeters, it will adjust it to six millimeters of thread to be advanced through the system. So it's very intuitive system based on just making some adjustments for your stitch width and your stitch length because they are tied in to the upper system. So I've surged beyond, I've cleared my sensor. And it's cut my thread off for me. I didn't bring it around, I didn't surge it off, I just came up here. But I can automate that. I can turn on the auto thread cutter. She here, see her in the display, it now shows the auto thread cutter is turned on. So when I stop surging, when I stop running and I get beyond the sensor, it will automatically cut thread for me. Now, can it get any easier? I don't think so, and I have perfect tension. Let's see if I can get up closer to you so you can take a closer look at the tensions on this. Come on, camera, focus for us. No, doesn't want to focus. There we go. So now you can see the front, and you can see the back. And I did this with multicolors just so that you could see them, that they're not pulling up one color from the other side, that you're actually seeing the actual thread laying on the fabric in the position it should be and they are meeting right at the edge. So we know we're getting a good quality stitch from our machine. So what do you think, Barbara? Tim, Juki Sergers are awesome. And yes, I am loving the MO3000. Wow, 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 wow. So, Barbara, I'm going to zoom in a minute so we can take a closer look at the screen. Great. Okay. I'm hoping everybody can see that now. Yes, it looks great. Excellent. So, what we're wanting to pay attention to is the letter A on the side. That is the stitch pattern I've got selected, and that corresponds with the dial over here on the other side. So, if I dial in a B, one needle, three thread overlock. And it shows me a B. So I know that's what the machine is now set for. The only settings I need to change are my cutting width and my stitch length. If I'm going to gather, I'm going to be using my differential feed. If I'm using a knit that I want to control the, the stretch of the knit, I'm still going to be using my differential feed. But my settings will not change. In other words, the rest of the machine is going to react to those settings once I've set them up. The letter C gives me a regular narrow seam. This is not a rolled hem. This is a narrow stitch, three thread, right needle. So I'm getting a very narrow overcasting. I'm doing garments 
small garments. I don't want a really wide overcast. I want a narrow one. That's what the narrow, the narrow stitch is for. And then rolled hem. Also, you see here, it's giving me information on whether my stitch finger should be up or it should be down, what uh, pressure, what's the range for my uh, stitch length and my cutting width, and things like that. They're all displayed here, but they stay on the screen over here at the right side, just as a reminder. If you look here, you see a tortoise. I mean, you see a little hair and the number nine. I'm not even running at full speed right now. Electronically, I've got the machine set at a nine, but it will go to a 10, which means it will then run at 1,500 stitches a minute. You can see here, my thread cutter is turned on to automatic and it's two, which is a, almost the shortest setting as you can get to have it be effective. So it's going to take very few stitches after you stop before it cuts the thread. So I'm going to surge beyond the plate. I have to take a certain number of stitches. I can control, do I want a really long tail? Do I want a really short tail of chain stitches before I can have the automatic thread cutter uh, trigger for me? So you have control over that as well. I think that's very important to be able to customize the machine the way you want it to work for you. The other nice thing is when I'm selecting my patterns, I can enter them and I can make an adjustment to it. I can also make an adjustment using the set key for all of my functions on the machine. Remember I talked about our lighting before? That's under my set, so I can adjust the intensity of the lighting. I can adjust the color of the lighting. I can adjust the contrast of the screen. I can change the options on the heel of my foot control. So I have the availability to make the machine the way I want to use it. Keep in mind, there are limitations on everything out there because they can only put so much into a machine for you. They can only think of so many things until we tell them we want something else. Now they've given us more to play with. So I'm already trying to think ahead for the next thing. How about you, Barbara? <laughs> well, uh, Tim, we did have a question, or not a question, but a comment that I absolutely love. I saved it. Um, this, it's asked, um, oh man, uh, now I can't find it, but was it, it was, will it do the dishes for me? <laughs> you know, I used to joke about wanting my sewing machine to make my coffee for me. So, no, it will not do the dishes. When you find a sewing machine that will make my coffee, we'll work on getting a surgeon that can do the dishes for us. <laughs> so, that's what I have for our sergers today, showing you our top of line, showing you the features that we've come out with, making surging fun, easier. You can be more productive with it. And you know what? It's only going to get better from here. But at some point, you're going to go, I want a serger. I know four sergers that will fall into the category I need to look at. And maybe I need to take time to go online and do some research and call my friends at all brands and get them to give me more information on the product I'm actually interested in. And you can't go wrong with the Juki serger. Oh, I totally agree, Tim. So I'm going to go over um, the actual prices of these machines currently. It is... Um, February 9th, 2023. So please check the product page um, if you're uh, checking this on a later date. But I think you'll be quite surprised at uh, how low these prices actually are. Um, so the first one that we looked at, the one that's in my studio, the MO1000 is only $12.99. And you can finance that for only $72 per month um, plus tax. That is a fantastic Fantastic deal. That's for 18 months, 0% financing through Synchrony. Uh, that is the Jet Air Serger. Um, so the same chassis, um, but with that amazing screen on it is the MO2000 QVP. Now this model is only $14.99, $83.28 per month for 18 months plus tax. It's free shipping. You can purchase either of these in store or online. Um, so all of the models that we're going to talk about are free shipping. So don't worry about that. The MO2800, uh, that uh, my favorite feature, Tim, is that rolled hem magic button on the front that just makes everything so easy. And, and then it turns uh, the turning radius is improved and so many uh, great improvements with the knee lifter. Uh, only $15.99 in store or online. That's about $88.83 per month plus tax for 18 months, 0% through synchrony financing and free shipping. 
All right, and last but not least, my favorite, you let me know in the comments what's your favorite, the top of the line, the MO3000 QVP. This one's $22.99. Um, it does basically all of the hard work for you, threads itself, <laughs> has the knee lifter, it has the trimmers, it has the intuitive screen, uh, and so much more. Only $95.79 per month. Uh, plus tax, free shipping, and you can purchase this in store on our website or on our website, allbrands.com. Tim, this is a game changer. It certainly is. And I and you asked about feet, and I saw a couple comments um, on on here about somebody said they had an old serger that they got, and they they could never use it because they couldn't ever thread it. And well, you know what? Talk to the friends at all brands. Maybe they can take that and trade and get you into a nice juky air thread. Then you don't have to worry about the threading issues because air threading is whoosh, and it's done. I can't tell you, I, I used to struggle with sergers. I mean, I did sergers back in the early 90s. And when they first came out in the home market, they were rather challenging. And then people would buy a serger and they would take it home and they would come back for a lesson, you know, and they just never really grasped it. The people that actually were wanting the surgery, they would grasp it. They would get onto the surgers and they would make them fly. And you always knew who did that because they're the ones who spent time with the, with the surger. Surgers were always one of those items you actually had to play with to get comfortable with. Well, you know what? Now you're going to play with it just because it air threads itself. <laughs> now you can actually like work hard on like the project that you're doing and not getting the machine to do what you want it to do because it's all like so much easier with these machines. Exactly. Now I'm going to talk about feet. So if we have a few minutes here, we can talk about feet and I'm just going to show you the feet pack. This is one of the feet packs that come in a nice little box like this. It'll tell you, say Juki on it. It'll tell you what model it fits. Like I said, if it says MO1000, it works on all of these surges. If it's an air thread surger, they all interchange the feet. I also saw a comment uh, again about what feet come with the machine. The MO3000 and the MO2800 both come with the regular foot, the new regular foot with the tape uh, gap, and the curved foot to accommodate the closer needle to cutter ratio. So that is a nice plus with those surgers. But they also allow you to have these other feet. And like I said, you can buy the feet that you want. Sets vary based on what is in each set. Some of the popular feet for people doing garment construction is the elasticator. This is rather a daunting looking foot. It's got all this metal contraption at the front. It snaps open. It's got a spring load on it. Actually, what you're doing is you're putting the elastic through it. You're tightening down the spring mechanism on the front to force the elastic to stretch for you. How many of us are used to the old days? We stretch out the elastic and we sew through the machine and we stretch out the elastic and we sew through the machine and we stretch out the elastic. It never comes out exactly even because every time we stretch it out, it's not consistent. This puts consistent stretch on it. We also have guide feet for doing edge work. So this is a guide to put pearls or cording down the side of a piece of fabric. We can drop it into the side. We can surge right along the edge. We're not going to drop a needle into what we're putting on. We put pearls on. So we have a pearl and cording foot. We also have an edge guide foot. It's got a bigger blade on the side here. You can see this blade is much bigger. It runs out much further in front of the toe. So I can use this as an edge guide if I'm desperate for that, that solid edge that I can't track very well with. Sometimes it's better to have an edge that you can push against than just trying to match against the edge, uh, when you're, especially when you don't have the blade on. You want to make sure that the edge stays consistent. This is a great foot to have. I always recommend an edge foot for people that do a lot of edging work or they're doing work where they're not using the blade on, on the serger to trim the fabric. We also have a cording foot that allows you to drop the cord into a guide at the toe. This is a nice foot also. The guides are designed to hold the cording or to hold, hold the beading so they don't flail around. How many of you tried to put pearls onto the edge of a piece of fabric on your sewing machine and you didn't have the right foot and so you were zigzagging and it was always kind of tripping over or snagging some of the pearls. Guides are designed to take that danger of having the needle hit out of it. So that's why I always like the guides have it. So those are just some of the feet that are available uh, in a set or individually for our uh, air thread sergers. They, the sets come all like a nice box so you can keep it nice and handy. I happen to like the box that has foam and every foot has its own set of directions with it. So you don't have to worry about 
what do I do with this foot? When you buy a foot, whether it's in a set or individually, they have a pack of directions for each foot in the set or a direction set for that foot in the in the pack. So what, what else you got for me today, Barbara? Well, we have a few questions. Um, so I'll go through those, but don't forget at the very end, we're going to be giving away a $50 allbrands.com e-gift card. So be sure to comment um, hashtag allbrands.com and I hope you win that. All right, Tim, I will bring up the questions. Our first question, and I brought some unique comments that uh, were really good. Um, here's one from Estella. She said, um, uh, and this is a very good question. Basically, how often should you service or have cleaned the serger? She said that her MO2000 QVP works perfectly. That's good to hear, and I appreciate you letting us know that. I will tell you, sergers do require a little bit more service than your sewing machines do. Because of the fact they have more intricate moving parts, there's no self-lubricating in them. You do need to keep the lint out, and there are maintenance instructions in your book and available online from the uh, the Juki website and the Juki YouTube channel so that you know where to put little drops of oil. Basically, where you see two pieces of metal rubbing each other and moving, you're going to want to put a drop of oil on there. I say a drop of oil. Where you don't want it to swim, we're just trying to provide lubrication so that the metal doesn't uh, wear itself out by having friction. The oil is designed to eliminate the friction and the movement between them. Servicing, depending on how often you use your serger. If you're a heavy serger user, three quarters of a year or a year, if you're super heavy, you might have to bring it in more than that. The key to avoiding extended service problems with your serger is to keep it clean, keep the lint out, and do as much of the lubrication you can on your own. After that, every year, if you're a medium user, maybe every couple of years, if you're a really, really light user, but it's still going to need it. The worst thing you can do is let it sit in the closet and do nothing. It needs attention. Figure it's your child. Oh, my goodness. So and that we're getting some other just great comments of how how much they love the features of this machine, how they're going to convince their family members <laughs> that they need this as soon as possible. Guys, this is a tool. So, um, you know, you can compare it to like a shop, you know, you have different tools for different functions and sewing. And this is a great tool for finishing your garments. Um, and it's going to help you be successful. Right, Tim? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> All right. So we're going to do a giveaway now. So I'm going to bring that up on the screen and announce the winner. And here we go. Good luck, everyone. And our winner for the $50 allbrands.com e-gift card is bum, bum, ba, dum, Crystal. Crystal Campbell, congratulations. Please email me at events at allbrands.com with your name, number, and address to claim your $50 allbrands.com e-gift card. Congratulations. Maybe you can use it on one of these new sergers. Thank you, Tim, so much for being on the show. And thank you, everyone, for watching. It's been so informative and great. Thank you, Tim, so much. Oh, you can't hear me. Oh, shucks. All right. Well, until next time, Tim, we'll see you at Everything Embroidery Market in March and the original sewing and quilting expo in May to learn more you can go to our website and click events here is EEM here is OSQE to see these machines in person if you're interested in coming at EEM let us know beforehand because our store is like 10 minutes away we'll ride over one of these uh, sergers for you there so, all right, everyone, congratulations, and we'll see you next week. Bye.